Hello guys, welcome back to SanVFX. Today we will be completing our fragmentation tab for our Rayfire basic tutorial that we left back in part 2. So we left draw fragment, uh, fragmentation by shapes and advanced fragmentation options. So today we'll be looking in, into these settings. So let me go to left view and here we have draw fragment. This means that we can draw our fragment shapes on our own. So let me add it to my add this object to my impact object. Okay, then I can fragment my uh, object by clicking this draw fragment mode. So now I have in a draw fragment mode. So now I can just click and draw the shapes like this so that I'll get my pieces. So you can draw multiple pieces okay. and once you are done fragmenting your object you can just right click to cancel the draw mode okay then you can see that we have our fragments okay here we have cool okay so in this way we can draw our fragments by ourselves from this option called draw fragment so here we have a noise that will let me again once more fragment this object let me go to left view okay right click this okay perspective f3 well, let me just change this color so that we can see it better okay So if you see that we have we have got some segments right there. So noise will determine the uh, detail in these fragment pieces, okay? And segment will add in more details uh, into this, and noise will make it more noisy or more fractal like that. Okay. Let me just do this, okay? So that is a draw fragment. It's pretty simple one. The next one is fragmentation by steps, and here we have cache shape. So here we can add in our images um, through which we can fragment our object. I've already loaded up an image because it takes some time to load up that image and most of the time I get not responding message so I just already uh, added that image. Let me show you what the image looks like. So this is the uh, refer cast image that I created in Photoshop with simple shapes. And I just loaded up that into my ray fire fragmentation by shapes cache shapes right here so now I can first of all create the shape from this image so let me click this now you can see that it automatically creates the shapes based on my image you can see like this okay then what I can do is cut my impact object based on that shape so I need to select the shape and hit the cut impact object okay since my impact object was straight so it didn't work correctly so let me just delete it and let me just rotate this one just 90 degree okay and then also shape it to fit the shape mm, let me go to top view so I can manage it properly okay Okay. P perspective. Okay. Now let me select my shape and cut my impact object. Okay, it will take some time, but not too much. Now you can see that my impact object is cut or fragmented based on this shape. So I have this piece separate right here. This piece, is, this piece, this piece, and even this one is a separate piece as well. Okay, so in this way you can fragment your object based on your image. Yeah. And these settings are quite a uh, simpler one, so we don't need to go to de detail on that. Okay, now final one in the fragmentation tab is advanced fragmentation option. So we'll just look at uh, some of the options right in here. Okay, so first we have fragmentation engine. So I have also already told you before that we have two fragmentation engines, Pro Boolean and Pro Cutter. 
we we can use probe boolean in most cases and if the probe boolean does not work perfectly or correctly then we can use procutter at the time fragmentation seed uh, okay let me just demonstrate you with this one let me just set the fragmentation seed to one okay and then fragment my impact object okay you just notice the shapes how it looks like okay and just let me just delete it and again fragment it so the fragmentations are exactly the same if I set the fragmentation seed to a similar number if this m is zero that means every time I fragment my object it gets a ram random fragments again you can see it is different than before we have got a large piece here again let me just fragment so we don't have that so that means when it is at zero we'll always get a different result each and every time we fragment our impact object but if we put it to specific number let's suppose three then fragment impact object okay you can just remember these points right here and delete again so you get you get the same result so if you want the different variety you can just put it to zero or you can set it to specific number to fragment your object phase threshold it is the minimum amount of phase for each fragments and size threshold the minimum num amount of size for each fragments as well and the material ID refers to the ID for our internal cracks after which we can add a multi sub object to it and noise scale it's uh, just auto so we don't need to play on with this one rift width this is the gap between fragments when you fragment an object and right now we have zero, 0 for rift width so let me just fragment my impact object then you do not see any gap between our fragments so let me just delete it and then bump this rift width to about 10 I think that's too much but let me try sorry right click and fragment my impact object okay it's not too much uh, let me bump this up to about 100 and then fragment my impact object okay it's not looking we're not getting any gaps uh, I don't know why actually uh, let me see what's going on right here okay Set rift width one delete it okay we are not getting any gaps right here oops sorry I forgot to s <laughs> say that uh, rift uh, that means gap between fragments it only works with pro boolean fragmentation types it does not work with Voronoi fragmentation type so I need to set it to pro boolean and fragment my impact object now you'll see the gaps between them okay you can see that we have now gaps I'm really sorry I forgot to say this okay so this rift width only works with pro boolean or pro cutter okay one let me now say it to 10 and then again fragment my object fragment impact object now you can see we'll have a much more gap between our fragments okay you can see like that so once that we have frag added a rift to our fragments then we can also fill those rifts if you click this option it will fill those rifts so if I fragment then we won't have that base but we'll have faces covering up that fragments okay sorry okay bake animation it will bake our animation once we play selection set it will create a set of fragments once we click the fragmentation button uh, animate impact fragments visi visibility and those are actually not so important but this one just didn't mind after we do an interactive demolition it will like if we are setting our impact object to glass or something it will just uh, hide the original object or animate the visibility of original object 
so that after it has cracked uh, it will uh, get back it will be hide the original object will be hidden and the cracks will be shown those are actually not so important all these are fine pretty much fine if at the default value we don't need to play too much with them so this will work pretty well with default values okay so um, this was a quick tutorial just to complete this fragmentation type tab so in next part we'll be looking at physics tab so till then have a great time see you next time